Okay, so first of all, go to insert and then get add-ins. Then search for advanced formula. And this is the add-in that you want here called the advanced formula environment. Once you have added this, then you can go to home and click on it at the end. Then we'll go to this web page here, which is a GitHub gist containing formulas that I have made. And we'll copy the URL. I'll leave the URL in the description so you can also use these formulas if you want. Then we'll go back to the spreadsheet and click here. And then control V to paste this URL and import. And this will import all of these formulas into the spreadsheet. I then need to sync them with the name manager. And then we'll go to formulas and name manager. And you'll see I have all these new formulas here. Okay, so first of all, we have the count unique formula which will count the number of unique items in a range. So in this case, we have apple, pear, and orange, so we get three. Then we have the word count formula, which will count the number of words in a cell. Then we have the word n formula. So that will extract a word from a cell based on its position. So if I put the number three in here, then it will get the third word from each of these cells. Then we have the age formula, which will compare a date to today's date and find out how many years, months and days are in between them. Then we have the neat range formula. And for this, we need to select the first number and the second number and then the format that we want. So I will put this in pounds and make it so that it is whole numbers and close brackets and enter. And now we get the first number and the second number with a dash in between formatted as pounds. So it is a neat range. The next formula is the missing formula. And this will look in the first array and the second array and will find all of the values in the first array that are missing from the second array. So in this case, we get dog and tiger as they are both missing from this list. Then we have the choose rand formula, which will choose a random value from an array. Then we have the repeat formula which will get you a list of repeating numbers. So I'll say that I want it to repeat three times, start at one, have a step of one, so we'll increase by one each time. Then I want it to stop once we've got to four numbers, and I'll make the type one and enter. And now I have each number repeating three times. It's starting at the number one and increasing by one each time, it stops once we get to four numbers. And then we can also change this so I can start at two and have a step of two. I'll get it to stop at three and then change this to type zero and enter. And now we have the numbers two, four, and six repeated three times. Then there is the repeat x times formula. And for this, we select an array and then the number of times that we want those values to repeat. And so now I have apple repeating two times and pear repeating three times and so on. Then we have the case sensitive count. And for this, we select an array and it will count how many times each of those values appears but it will be case sensitive. So there are two apples here with a lowercase a, and then one apple with a capital letter A. And sometimes you get a code or something which is a mix of both numbers and text. So with the get.num formula, 
you can get just the number part out of that cell. And then we also have the get.text formula, which will extract just the text part from a cell. Then we have the wind formula, and this will take the wind direction in degrees and convert it into an actual direction. So 173 degrees becomes south and 3 degrees becomes north, for example. Then we have the sheet names formula. And this will get us a list of all of the sheets in the workbook that we're currently in. Now this formula works a little bit differently to all of the other formulas because it uses the get.workbook formula. It means that you have to save the spreadsheet as a macro enabled workbook in order for it to work. Then we have the list table formula, and this will take a table like this and then list all of the values. So, for example, I have three countries here that are from Asia, and they are now all listed in one cell. Then we have the M formula, which stands for month, and if I select a date, it will then tell me what month that date is in. And we can change the format of this. So if I put the number one in here, it will get me just the first letter of the month. If I put the number two in here, then I get the month with the first three letters. And that's also the default. And then three will get me the whole word. Then we have the WD formula, which stands for week day. And with this, when you select the dates, it will get you the weekday for each of those dates. And again, we can change the formatting. So if I put the number one in here, it will get me just the first letter of the day of the week. And number two will get me the first three letters. And that is also the default. And then three will get the whole word. Then we have the season formula. And if I select these dates again, that will get me the season that each of those dates is in. So spring, summer, autumn, or winter. And this assumes that you are in the Northern Hemisphere. Then we have the quarter formula. And if I select these dates, then that will tell me what quarter each of the dates is in. So the first quarter or the second, third, or fourth. Then we have the calendar formula. And if I just put zero in here, then it will get me the calendar for the month that we are currently in. But I can also select a particular date and it will get the calendar for the month that that date is in. Then we also have the year table formula. And for this, we need to select an array where the first column contains dates and the second column contains numbers. And this will take all of the years in the first column and then combine the numbers together for each year. And this has an optional argument, so we can put one and it will sum the numbers, so add them together. And two will average the numbers, and that's the default. And then three will give you a count of the numbers. Then we also have the month table formula, which is the same thing, but for the months instead. And this has the same formats. So one will get you the sum of the numbers and two will get you the average. And then three will get you the count. Then we have the filter X formula, and this will take an array and then filter out any row which contains a blank cell or an error. Then we have the sum columns formula, and this will allow you to take an array and then sum each of the columns. We also have the average columns formula and a formula to get the standard deviation of all of the columns. 
Then we have the same thing, but for the rows. So you have the sum rows formula to sum all of the rows together, and then the average rows formula, and then a formula to get the standard deviation for each of the rows. Now the next few formulas are a bit more specific. So if I select this data here and then add in a trend line, I can then change this trend line so it's a polynomial and display the equation. I'll make the font for this equation a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. And we get three numbers from this equation. But if you want to get these numbers using a formula, you can use the quad formula. So we need to select the x values and then select the y values and enter. And you'll see we get the same three numbers here as we have in the equation in the chart. Then we also have the Spearman's formula. And with this, you need to select one array and then a second array, and it will get you the Spearman's rank correlation between those two arrays. Then we also have the correlation table. And with this, you can select the whole table and press enter, and it will get you all of the correlations. And this is recreating the correlation table that you get if you use the data analysis tool pack add-in. And you'll see we get a table with the same numbers. So this is just the same thing, but as a formula. Then we have the H join formula, and this will allow you to horizontally join two tables together. So I'll select the first table here and the second table here, and this assumes that the first column in both tables is the same. And then when I press enter, you'll see that these tables have been joined together and the rows have been lined up. So we have flight two, four, and six here, and they've been spread out in this table so they line up with the values from the first table. Then we have flight eight here, which isn't in the first table, so that's just at the bottom. Then in addition to H join, we also have V join to vertically join two tables together. So I'll select this table here and then this table. And this is again assuming that the first column is the same in both tables. And now you'll see that it's lined up the columns in each table. So both of the tables have a column A and a column C but only the first table has a column B, and only the second table has a column D. Then we have the pivot one formula, and with this you need to select an array with variables in the first column, and then numbers in the second column. And this will take all of the items and then combine the numbers together. And there are a couple of optional arguments for this. So one will get you the sum of the numbers, and two gets the average of the numbers, which is also the default, and three gets the count. And then there's a second optional argument for if you want to have a total at the bottom. And then two will get you no total, and that's also the default. Then we also have pivot two, which is designed to work with two variable columns and then one number column at the end. And this will take the values in the first column and make them go down the side and the values in the second column and make them go across the top. And then the numbers are combined together in the middle. And this also has optional arguments. So we have one for sum and then two to average, which is also the default, and then three to get the count. And this also has an option for whether you want totals or not. And then finally, we have the unpivot formula. And with this, it does the opposite thing, 
and rearranges the table like this. So we now have four A's for quarters, one, two, three, and four, and these four numbers here are now going down the side. Okay, so in this video, I have shown you how to use the lambda formulas that I have made in Excel, and that is everything.